Hello, showmates, and welcome back. Today, I'd like to talk about a relative newcomer to the aquarium hobby, the Philopaludina martensi, or the white wizard snail. It is a beautiful gastropod with its off-white to cream-colored shell, comprising of six to seven conical whorls, a dark blue face and yellow body, and long cephalic tentacles. It is one of the larger freshwater snails, growing up to two inches, and one of the longest living snails, living up to five years. White wizard snails were discovered in 1860 in their native waters of Southeast Asia by Edward von Martens, hence their name Philopaludina martensi. They prefer still waters, such as canals, swamps, and rice fields, but will also be found in slow moving currents, such as streams and rivers. They prefer a temperature range from 70 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit and thrive in parameters of pH of between 7.0 and 8.5, GH of a range of 5 to 20 degrees, and a KH range of 4 to 12 degrees. They are sensitive to nitrates, so it's best to keep nitrates under 40 parts per million. They are algae-eating omnivores, mostly feeding on detritus in the wild. In the aquarium, they don't remove algae the best, so it is recommended to feed your white wizards just as you would mystery snails. High calcium foods, sources of protein, fresh blanched veggies. They also have the ability to filter feed using their gill. Isn't that awesome? Wizards come from sandy areas, so fine gravel or sand does best for these little guys. Larger substrates will actually stress them, as they are a burrowing snail too. These little dudes are gonochoristic, meaning they need both a male and female for reproduction. They are very easy to sex by external features. Males will have one markedly thicker antenna. Females' antennae will be equally sized. Another attribute to this little creature is that they are viviparous, meaning they give birth to live young. White wizard snails have a very low rate of reproduction, so even if they are kept in large groups, it will not be likely to overpopulate the aquarium. Their embryos develop in capsules kept in the mother's brood chamber. Viviparity provides protection for the developing young. They are enveloped by the egg capsule, which breaks before birth. Females give birth to juveniles mainly at night. Each gestation period varies between 5 and 15 babies and depends on the female's size. The baby wizards are fully developed at birth. They are fully formed miniatures of the adults. It's so cute. The only difference is that their color will be darker. My babies originally looked dark purple at first. As they get older, their shells will become more white. The baby should be fed finely powdered food at least once a day in the beginning to increase their survival rate. I fed mine Hikari first bites and they did wonderful. Wizards are most active at night, but will sometimes move around during the day. They are a very shy type of snail and can become easily scared. This will cause them to retreat into their shell or burrow themselves in the substrate for sometimes a few days. But there's no need to worry. They will soon reemerge once they regain their confidence. The recommended tank size for a single white wizard is a five gallons per adult, unless you are supplementing feeding. They are peaceful and only have their operculums for protection so a peaceful community tank is highly recommended. There is so much to love about these unique little snails. I highly recommend adding these little guys to your cleanup crew. Eventually, 
There will be some available for snail in the Peplin Creeks Aquatic Store in Getgills. But for now, they are still just wee weezards. <laughs> Thank you for watching today's video. If you enjoy this type of content, please hit that like button and consider subscribing. Set that bell icon to all to be notified of live streams and future uploads. As always, make it a great day, showmates. Love you all. Bye. Bye.